Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I painted up this Citadel Crater piece of terrain using a combination of the Citadel paint that came with the uh, Citadel Roman Battle Table and some airbrush paints by Badger, as well as some Citadel paints. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So obviously I recently acquired this terrain piece and it looks nice. It has some great detail on it. I didn't keep the trees on it because it just didn't look right with the trees in my opinion. But it has no color. It's just some uh, gray resin. So we got to fix that and make it look awesome for some battle reports. So I started off by priming it entirely black outside with just a uh, can of Army Painter uh, black spray paint or primer because I just wanted something that the paint can cling to and also create some great uh, shadows at the beginning so it's great because all the colors that we're going to be using today go really well over black other than the colors of the tank but we'll have to do something later to fix that. So I start off by using the brown. Now this is a pretty much medium tone brown and it came with the Citadel Realm of Battle table. I had some extra brown paint left so I decided to use it on the terrain piece that way the terrain piece perfectly matches the table and that's great. So I just used a pretty big brush and applied some good amount of paint to the entire surface other than where the, you know, the rocks are going to be or the tank because that would just be uselessly using paint. And I laid down some uh, shop towels just because I knew I'd be going to the very edges. I wanted to make sure that the paint is completely evenly distributed over the entire surface as well as over the entire edges. Uh, you notice that in the picture I'm not going to use any grass. I was debating whether or not to use grass and uh, if, if you want to use grass in the center feel free. I just decided not to because I like to look without the grass in the center. Plus if you use grass on the edges it creates an appearance where you have to perfectly match the table and just too much work. So I just continue painting the brown over the entire surface, making sure it's nice. And when it was uh, done with the big brush, I took it then a small brush just to make sure to cut in the surfaces and get in all the areas that the big brush could not get into, because you want to get make sure you just get all the surface of the brown. And next, I took the ochre paint that was once again from the Citadel Round Battle set, and uh, I did a heavy dry brush over all of the ground surface. Uh, if you don't have ochre, I recommend Taucept ochre. Either way, it's like a mustardy yellow. And once again, this, the heavy dry brush is just to bring out the surface details. There's a lot of texture to this piece of terrain, and I really, really like the, the texture. And you really want to bring that out with the ochre. And uh, just the key is to mix up your brush strokes, and that way you don't, uh, you don't end up doing the crazy bad dry brush lines when you're dry brushing. See now I'm going over all the surface of the stone. And then next I am using a paint from the Minotaur range called Stone. And it's a great uh, dark bluish gray. And I'm going to use it combined with my airbrush. I'm using a Badger Patriot 105. And I'm going to paint in the craters and all the stones on the terrain piece. And I'm going to make sure I get all the surface of them. Uh, you can leave a little bit of gray if you want in the shadows and uh, mix up the amount of paint you cover the surfaces. That way it has a bit of a shadow effect. That's a, one of the great reasons why you prime uh, in black. And once again, I'm just painting all the surfaces, the stone. And with an airbrush, it saves you a lot of time. As you can see, it didn't take me very long at all to paint up the surfaces and the uh, the row, the rocks, uh, the rockway between the craters and the stones on the sides. However, I just don't want a one-dimensional stone color, so afterwards I took Dusty Ground, another color from the Minotaur range, and I focused on the raised areas of the stone just to hit the, the top parts to make it look like it was an old weathered stone appearance, an older appearance because remember sun bleaching would occur on the top areas, and that way it also creates some shadowing on the bottom parts. So I just focused on all the top areas and created a gradient of light gray to dark gray, light gray at the very top to dark gray at the very bottom. It also really uh, exaggerates the appearance of the stones, especially on the stoneway and the very tops of the craters. And since this is going to be used for battle reports, I really just want to create an emphasized appearance. So I just went over all the crater areas, as you can see here. And you see that nice, uh, there's now a gradient of color. And that's great, it's not one-dimensional stony appearance. And then I just went around the edges of the 
uh, Stoneway, once again to exaggerate them. The other option is to use a shade, maybe a, a combination of blue and black in the recesses, but I tried that and just didn't look, really appear, so I just decided to just emphasize the, uh, the edges rather than try to deepen the crevices. And now it's time to paint the tank. So I decided that I'm going to go with my favorite color scheme, Imperial Fist, so yellow. Uh, you can choose any color you want, depending on what maybe what Space Marine Army you play, what Space Marine Army your opponent plays, what is your least favorite, what is your most favorite. I chose Imperial Fists. So the problem is, yellow doesn't very go well over black. So I decided to first highlight the uh, do a pre-highlighting with Dusty Ground. That way, um, I'm just going to build up a couple layers that the yellow can easily go over, because yellow over black would be a quite the difficult challenge. And then I further highlighted certain surfaces with Snow White. These two colors are, once again, both from the, uh, the Minotaur range. And they're just driver ready, and I used it to highlight the, the, the areas that should be you know, facing the light source and just should be brighter. And now I've created a nice uh, amount of shadowing already on the miniature, and that way I can just then now go over with yellow, and the yellow will easily be able to cover the white areas, and we'll have some great shading from the black areas and the dark gray areas. So once that was done, I took mustard gas, uh, which is a darker golden yellow. Uh, it's kind of the equivalent of Avalon Sunset. And I applied it to the surfaces. Uh, I went over it a couple times just to make sure to get the yellow good coverage. And as you can see, now I have that nice shading from the previous few steps. And it's looking pretty good. It's just uh, it's going to be a pretty quick covering because it's going to be a pretty crappy tank. It's crashed and then it's going to be abandoned. And the mustard gas tends to go over the white with relative ease. And when the uh, when it was done, as you can see, it's a golden yellow. I then went over it with irradiated yellow just to highlight the surfaces up a little bit more. Or uh, irradiated yellow is the middle tone, kind of the aerial yellow of the Minotaur range. I didn't really worry about getting a little bit of yellow on the ground around it because I'm going to be fixing that later by um, doing the mud effect on the tracks. And uh, just to break up the monotony of the yellow, I didn't want it to be a giant, you know, big birdish looking vehicle. So I painted up the areas um, on the tanks with Abaddon Black as well. I just quickly masked it off and then sprayed it quickly black with Abaddon Black. Next I turned my attention to the trees. Uh, as I said, I didn't keep the whole trees in because I just didn't like the look of them. So I kept the stumps because it looks like it would be more likely to be on a crater site. Just stumps and remnants of trees. And I painted them with Mornfang Brown, which is a slightly darker reddish brown than the brown I used for the surface. And that's good because I, I didn't want the trees to completely blend into the ground. So I first painted them with Mornfang Brown. Um, another extra step if you want to create a little bit more of a definition is to then hit it with an Agrax Earthshade, but then I just ignored that and I hit a, and I did a quick dry brush over the surfaces with a Shabti Bone. And the light brown will quickly uh, blend in with the dark brown and just create that great uh, variation tone so that way you can see the, all the raised parts very easily. It'll accentuate them quite well, but it won't uh, overwhelm the dark brown. And I use the Shabti Bone to base coat all of the skulls and skeletons on the crater piece as well. Because once again, it's a great bone tone, so you might as well use it to, uh, to set the foundation of those colors. And here I'm just applying it to the miniatures. Now I did thin it down a little bit when I was applying the miniatures. I thinned it down with a quite little bit of airbrush thinner. And when it was dry, I hit all of the bone areas with Agrax Earthshade. I really want to give them that darker, dull, uh, dirty appearance. So I didn't even thin down the Agrax Earthshade. Next, I painted up all the metallic areas on the tank, uh, the treads, the exhausts, uh, that whole piece that's missing the, uh, the cover. And I painted them up with Lead Belcher, the dark silver from the Citadel range. And basically right now it's just my goal is to get a solid foundation on all these areas that I'm going to of course give it a shade and, and a quick highlight. But it's great because it goes over the surfaces very easily, very quickly. And I just painted up all the surfaces with the belt shirt. As you see here, I'm focusing on all the tracks. Even all the tracks are broken down. And I, then I decided to take lead belcher and just using a, a sharp brush, I created some uh, sharp scratches on the surface using lead belcher. The other option would be to use the chipping method 
to create the same effect that I used in the Morcanaut tutorial. But I decided just to uh, to go and try this. I'm going to try to vary around my, my weathering methods in my tutorials. That way you guys see a little bit of each one. So as I said, I'm just creating some scratch patterns on the uh, surface of the tank and try to mix them up and vary the size and the direction and focus on areas that are normally in contact with things. And when that was done, I took a one-to-one -one mix of non oil and agrax earthshade and applied it to all my metallic surfaces and even some of the scratch surfaces just to create a muddy appearance, but I left using the scratch surfaces alone. And this is great. A one-to-one -one mix of non oil and agrax earthshade will do a great job of giving an older worn out appearance. And I'm just going to leave uh, most of those areas uh, the, the shading because it gives a dull appearance. And next I took muddy brown a dark brown from the Minotaur range and I applied it to all the bottom of the tank. Since it just plowed through the mud, I really wanted to just build up the mud colors on the tank because it should have a good amount of mud on it. It's, it's a ruined old decrepit tank, so it should be pretty muddy and dirty. That's great, muddy brown is great in a wet look. And then I took uh, the muddy brown just as I applied to all the surfaces around the tank to make sure it creates a good blend between the uh, the, the tank and the vehicle around itself. And then I took a one-to-one -one mix of nebula red and bark to create a dirty, slightly rusting out appearance. So it creates a, a brownish red and I applied it to almost all the surface of the model. So I took it and applied it a little bit to the bottom and then to the top areas. And as you can see here, it really does create, a, on top of that yellow, a really dirty, rusting out appearance. I just wanted to give it a try and see how it appears, but it, I think it turned out quite nicely. Because now you can see the tank is starting to really rust out and get really gross and dirty and it's chipped. And then I took my iron breaker, and once again I re-scratched some of the surfaces just to, uh, this would, it, I went over some of the older scratched surfaces, and this just creates a, a newer scratch appearance, basically a fresher scratch appearance. And then I did a quick dry brush over a couple of the metallic areas as well, a little bit of the tracks, and uh, the guns as well, just a tiny bit. I really wanted to keep the dull, dirty appearance though, so I didn't uh, try to give too much of a shine to them. And then I painted all the astromilitarum stuff, the Strachan green, uh, the helmets, and the gun. And that's it! After it was painted, I should note that I did uh, hit it with a couple quick coats of a matte varnish. That way it creates the dull appearance of the ground and also protects the piece, because you don't want it to scratch after you've... Uh, You've worked so hard to paint it, but in the end, I think it turned out pretty well. This, the airbrush saved me a lot of time, and it really does match my Citadel Realm Battle Table. It was uh, pretty quick, and I like the way that the aging was done on the tank. So I think it turned out pretty cool with the amount of time I spent on it. I really hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below what you'd like to see next, and uh, thank you for checking out the warp. It really does mean a lot. And until next time, this is Jay saying, "Happy painting, everyone."